Well, good morning, friends, and welcome again to Wellversed, and I greet you in the name of Jesus. I want to move on this morning into Romans chapter 5, and I want to read verses 1 through to 6. And I want to speak today about the results of faith, or with a subtitle, if you like, of peace and joy. So let me read you this little passage, Romans 5, 1 to 6. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. I read just to there. So I want to speak today about the results of faith with the subtitle of Peace and Joy, which, depending on which version of the Bible you're reading, is the subtitle for this little passage. You see, one of the results of our faith, and we spoke about this at some length last week, the results of our faith is peace and joy. And so let's put some flesh on it quickly. In the first four chapters of Romans, Paul shows us that we are justified, or to put it another way, declared righteous, or to use a a little memory thing with the word justified, just as if I'd. That's what righteousness is, just as if I'd never sinned. Now, Paul says, since we're justified, we have peace. Do you have peace? Real peace, not just an absence of trouble. Do you have real peace? And I want to suggest that only through Christ's death and resurrection can we find real peace. In other words, only through faith and understanding about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ will we find peace. In verse 2, through Christ, we found access to peace with God. Jesus is the official, in inverted commas, who brings us into God's presence. That is, into grace. To come into God's presence is to come into grace. God's grace equals peace and mercy and love and joy. What wonderful synonyms. Grace is God's peace and mercy and love and joy. For Paul, the meaning of grace is a very broad and a very deep meaning. As God's children, through faith, we can come into God's presence at any time. Through God's grace, we also experience joy. And in this joy, we rejoice. Those are the first two verses. The third verse speaks in terms about rejoicing in God's glory is not easy. To rejoice in suffering, and that's what verse 3 is saying. It's not he's saying we glory in our suffering. is not easy. However, Christians rejoice in suffering and hardship. Please note that Paul says in and not in spite of them. Now, if suffering is supposed to be good for us, begs the question, what good does it do? The answer is one word, perseverance. Suffering produces perseverance. That's what comes out of suffering, perseverance. Two kinds of suffering. One is self-inflicted, and that's hard. The other comes from righteousness, and we can rejoice in this. In other words, it comes through a lifestyle. It comes through an ongoing practicing of our faith and our perseverance, if you like. Because as we practice our faith, it produces perseverance. That's what this little passage is all about. Perseverance makes us stronger. 
Perseverance matures us. Perseverance deepens our faith. And when we've got all this, then we have hope. Hope is the result of a stronger, deeper faith in Jesus Christ. Remember the parable of the sower? The sun represents suffering and persecution in the little parable of the sower. And you know the story of the sower. Some gets sown in the morning, some at noon, some in the afternoon. And the whole little story is that when we persevere, our character strengthens and matures and we have hope. And so, my friends, please look at verses 4, 5, and 6 again in the light of what I'm saying at this moment. Especially look at this word perseverance. Because perseverance leads to character. I'm quoting. And character leads to strength. And strength leads to maturity. And maturity leads to hope. And hope leads to salvation. Verse 5. Hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Verse 5 leads to hope and leads to love. And when it's done that, it overflows. And now, my friends, I want you to go back into your world right now and overflow for Jesus. You open to peace and joy. May your lives tell the Jesus story. May my life tell the Jesus story today. Let's pray. Father God, we let the words peace and joy and love uh, slip off our tongues very glibly. And yet, and yet, they are words with such depth and such power and such potential. May our lives be filled with your love and your grace and your hope and your peace and your joy as we go back into our day today. Thank you for being with us as we have shared this time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please have a, a very special day today, my friends. God bless. 